Yeah, I'm making a holiday video. Um, yeah, to those people, look, you know it's a holiday video. I put his name in the title, and then you whine about it. It's just so useless um, to tell me what videos I should respond to and all this stuff. If you want to make suggestions of alternatives, fine. Somebody, some video I should respond to, fine. But this complaining that I, I'm, oh, this is too, too much of a video. I shouldn't make this video. Fuck you. There's an argument here, and I'm going to argue it. Stupid fuckers. Just so, so useless. Um, anyway. So, uh, yeah, I don't like that this is all we've got. Um, but there are five or six of these lunatics. So they're worth communicating with. Um, I mean, the comment section just demonstrates it. I mean, this is just hilarious. From this self you know, the burning bush guy. It's laughable. I mean, wants us to point out the error in his logic, which goes premise one, premise two, premise three. Question mark. Yeah, again, why do you need a conclusion? The point is, is do, are the premises valid? If the premises aren't true, that's how you would defeat it if I gave you a conclusion. Correct, idiot? I mean, you really are a complete imbecile, right? That you don't understand. You can't argue the conclusion. You have to argue the premises. So I gave you the only part of the equation you can possibly argue with. You can't argue conclusions. You have to argue premises and point out how the premises don't add up, or they don't do this, or they don't do that. But all I'm saying right now is point out where one of the premises is wrong. Because I'm saying they point to lots of things. Lots and lots of things. Um, doesn't there need to be a conclusion? No! <laughs> it really doesn't. Yes, we are, again, 95% of the time, in a logical argument, you're going to defeat the conclusion by defeating one of the premises. The obvious mistake of saying, you know, the Eiffel Tower is very tall. Uh, ducks have feathers. I like jelly beans is the conclusion. I mean, obviously, that doesn't mean anything. So you could say, okay, your conclusion has nothing to do with your premises. But my argument is going to be clearly that my conclusions are going to have lots to do with my premises. And so if you can't defeat one of the premises, you're not going to be able to defeat my conclusions. Uh, yes, we are disputing the premise where he talks about bad. Okay, again, and, and, and disputing it with what logic? Your argument, your statement that there's no such thing. You demonstrate it with what evidence? When every bit of evidence in my brain says, I can tell the difference between not only bad and good, but bad and nothing. They're not the same thing. They can't be the same thing. It's ludicrous to call them the same thing. You're fucking insane. <laughs> yeah, that's what he needed to present in a logical argument. I don't need to present it in a logical argument. Again, there's no other way to explain feelings than to have them. And I'm saying you're basically just lying through your fucking face to say you can't tell the difference between feeling nothing and feeling pain. And that you don't know that pain is less than nothing, not the same as nothing, not better than nothing. You know that. If I put you to the test, you would say, don't torture me. You would say it. Uh, anyway, indeed, you're going to challenge people to point out where you've made a logical error. It might be a good idea to preface the challenge with a logical argument. Well, again, the logic is in the premises. Again, I pointed this out. You people don't seem to understand. Facts point. So you have to dispute one of the facts. I've given you the evidence of the trial. I'm not saying O.J.'s guilty. I'm just pointing out O.J.'s has got a size 14 foot. And I'm just pointing out that O.J. has a cut finger. And O.J. just happens to blah, 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 blah. I'm spelling out the facts. You're not fucking able to re refute any of them. And certainly not able to refute them based on some logical argument. All you can say is, is I've interpreted my sensations wrong. That unlike you, who don't feel anything and can't tell the difference between good feelings and bad feelings and nothing and bad feelings, and think feeling pain is the same as feeling nothing, I don't interpret my feelings that way at all. That has absolutely nothing to do with anything I've personally experienced, and there's no fucking way you're going to convince me that my personal experience for 55 fucking goddamn years has been completely a sham and a fraud, and there's no such thing as a really bad feeling. Fuck you, insane kook. But of course, this <coughs> specificities in area of interest of rhetoric and denunciation, not logic. Well, again, you don't understand what logic is. Logic is facts, shit for brain. So way to go. Be a moron. Stay a moron. Don't improve yourself, retard. 
<laughs> so holy lucky he put some tips to amend him people who think all life is shit necessarily think their own lives is shit well again i'm not gonna these, these aren't this isn't the subject right you still can't argue the argument which is you can't have it both ways you think your feelings are more important than other people's feelings well you're a deluded fucking egomaniacal crazy fuck okay if that's what you think if you think you're doing something special if you think you're worth it you're full of shit uh news flash um yeah, whatever. Uh, so wait, this isn't, this isn't, you know, this isn't logic. <sighs> Just a waste of people's time. So way to go. You're a time waster on top of being a fool. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, even this cool guy is an idiot. Um, how is a nail in the eye or any extreme pain event not bad for innocent, sentient people? It's bad for any sentient organism. It doesn't matter whether they're innocent or not. It's a bad experience, fuckhead. <laughs> okay, how am I saying it isn't? And Mendham is maintaining that bad for you is also my concern. Again, it, I'm not saying it's your concern. I'm saying you can't logically defend selfishness. It's bad. When bad happens, it's like if we were, I've used the analogy of this, okay, let's say, let's say we're machines and we produce red plates and green plates. Okay, green plates are good, red plates destroy green plates and are bad. You have to demonstrate to me some reason why I should think you're a better plate maker, first off. That your plates are real plates and their plates are not real plates. Their plates aren't real green and their plates aren't real red. Only yours are real green and real red. That ain't going to work. That ain't going to happen. You don't have any chance in fucking goddamn hell in doing that. So all the plates are worth it. Your plates are worth it. Their plates are worth it. They're all real. So you either make them all real or you make them all unreal. And I don't think you can honestly say your sensations aren't a real event. And they aren't a real bad event. So again, you're just being a liar. You're playing word games to just maintain your selfish attitude. And that's all you're doing. You're rationalizing your selfishness when it can't be logically defended. And you're doing it in this arrogant and obnoxious manner where you have no fucking evidence that you're superior. You have no fucking evidence that you're worth it. None. You provide nothing. You don't explain in one way how your bad feelings are somehow more meaningful than their bad feelings. Except that you're experiencing them personally, which has absolutely nothing to do because they're experiencing theirs personally. You experiencing it personally has nothing to do with a distinction. That distinction exists in every single fucking organism experiencing them. They don't experience somebody else's pain. They experience their pain. And it's still bad. It's the same fucking thing. That's what it is. It's not a different thing. It's the same fucking thing. And you provide no evidence indicating how it could possibly be considered a different fucking thing. Them feeling, you feeling, not different. All right, so this cool guy's an idiot Here for this statement alone. I know, <laughs> but answer me this. If you could push one button immediately and all the extreme suffering, would you push it? Um, I know. So, so he's agreeing with this. I know. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, fine. Uh, I-O-W, your reluctance to base on a degree of difficulty rather than concept of indifference, rather than contempt or indifference. Um, yeah, so Hathleday is conceding he would press the button without good reason. So as long as it takes him no effort, he'll do it. If it's an effort, he won't do it. And so that's a different kind of a value equation, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, he's arguing for a principle and saying people who have interpreted their sensations as being a real bad event in the universe and then understand that other people's sensations, negative sensations, suffering, is a real ev bad event in the universe. Those people who think they have an obligation not to... Ex oh, look, you have no obligation not to exploit somebody if you think their pain doesn't matter. If you think their pain isn't a real thing, it isn't a real bad in the world, then you have no reason not to exploit them. So how can be for anything that protects any person from any kind of abuse or tyranny or capture or destruction or any kind of anything? Because he's basically said there's no logical reason to, uh, to uh, uh, consider that a real bad is happening when they are in pain. I mean, this really isn't that complicated. So anyway. People just suck. Let's see what these were. Philosophy by identifying facts of reality, and one uses logic to ensure conclusions are the most accurate representation. Well, whatever. Again, uses logic is just kind of a silly thing to say. 
It's like saying using plus signs and equal signs. Logic is just saying you, you know, again, you can't just switch the signs. You can't, you, you know, you, you have to play by these really, really simple rules of relevancy and um, continuity. Uh, Gary, keep asking your logical error. <laughs> Gary keeps asking for the logical error in what he is saying. He openly admits omits however any conclusion well again you don't need the conclusion i'm saying first he Hothley's argument is that it's illogical and i'm saying well go ahead point out how one of these premises is wrong because once the premises are established as the truth there's no logical problem whatsoever uh giving only premises well again the premises are the facts of the trial they're the only thing that matter I'm not sure there can be a logical error in a logical argument if he hasn't made one. Well, again, I don't need to make arguments that I've already made, so this is just kind of bullshit. I mean, the argument I want to make is going to be quite obviously that there's no logic in selfishness. Uh, the game is the net product in the end. The value of your life will be judged by that, not how happy you are, how well you did. The point's going to be is what kind of mess did you make in other people's brains? That's going to be part of the add up your life thing, okay? You can't torture somebody else and then say, I had a good time and therefore it was worth it and therefore there was a profit for the universe. Because there wasn't a profit for the universe because somebody else goddamn fucking paid for it, you fucking idiot. <clears throat> All right. Uh, this is why I say he should stick to other words and refrain from the word logical. Again, you don't know what logic means. Logic has to have facts, and I'm saying dispute one of the facts. Shit for brain. Uh, LOL. He obviously made some, i.e., fix the blatant problems or terminate. I don't even know what that means. LOL. Fuck you. That's all I got to say to you. Uh, perfect example. I see no logical argument there. I, I don't know what this even means. Fix the blatant problems or terminate. I don't even know what that means. LOL. He's obviously made some, i.e. fix the blatant problems or terminate. Perfect example. I see no logical argument there. So you have something, you have an unacceptable de um, deficit you're creating and your solution should be neither to fix it or to stop it. That's not a logical argument. The logical argument saying if you do nothing it will maintain a, a perpetual deficit. And this is an asshole who's arguing 10 seconds later about how people should uh, better manage water and take care of the environment and all this wishy-washy bullshit. Hilarious. So because you're lucky, the rest can suffer. I thought you agreed with him. Um, implied straw man, another perfect example of the way Gary reasons. Where did I say anything like that? You say it if you're agreeing with the premise that your feelings have substance and other people's feelings do not. They either both have substance or they neither have substance. If they neither have substance, then I don't know why the fuck anyone would fix anything ever if they can just say, it doesn't matter. Burning to death in a fire is just as good as eating a cupcake. That's the argument being made here, especially if it's a them. <laughs> and adding that especially it's a them thing there just makes it all the more obvious that this is just a rationalization for selfishness. You can't have it both ways. Uh, you can just come out and say hell with them as that seems to be your true POV. My true POV has been explained in my videos where I, I haven't found a rational video of yours yet where you explain how it doesn't really matter what happens, but I emotionally think you ought to agree with me. <laughs> I'm an anti-natalist vegan for no rational reason, let's add, YouTube video contributor. Unlike yourself, uh, I'm an emotional lunatic who can't tell the difference between a fact and a fantasy of mine. Now, make a logical argument or say to me the views I've expressed are not strictly logical, but dot dot dot. Yes, I've expressed the view that it is preposterously illogical to think you're having a real experience and other people are having an unreal experience. That's illogical. You don't have any evidence of that. Absolutely no evidence whatsoever. Um, Alright, so where do I go from here? Oh, back to the video, I presume. Oh, how fucking fascinating that will be. Um, so anyway, play along.
I mean, I'm only going to okay. be two minutes. I haven't and been able to get past two minutes yet. Yeah, yes, that's better. Thank you. Yeah. It's not that um, quick, actually. And it's so redundant, right? It's, it's, I, I did skip a little, just a little bit. And I got to two minutes. And you started arguing the meaning of negative and bad again. It's like, we've already done that, asshole. I've already qualified my definition of it. You say that can't exist. Okay, you're saying there's no such thing as a real bad. I'm saying that's a, the most ludicrous thing you could possibly say in the universe, in my opinion. Uh, being a sentient being. It's just an insanely, insanely stupid thing to say. Suffering is not nothing. And it certainly isn't good. Now, if it's not one of those two things, there's no other thing it can be but bad. First of all, Gary... Stop moaning about uh, myself or others not dealing with your threesome. You, you don't deal with any of it, okay? That's the real problem, okay? I've already counter-argued all this shit over and over, and you just keep saying the same crap. I've pointed out, what's the logic here? You think your feelings are special. You th really think your feelings have actual bad quality, and other people's feelings do not. That's why you react to yours and don't react to theirs. Is because you've concluded yours are important and theirs are not important. What logic do you use to make that distinction? Where's the evidence that you're the special pawn that deserves to be considered when they deserve not to be considered? Where do you logically find the reason to do that? To think that there's profit or benefit or improvement where do you, what logic compels you to say something like, it's infinitely better if someone else suffers than me? Both premises, as you put it. The first premise is, um, I arrived on Earth. The second premise goes something like, I realized I had good and bad sensations. Right? Now, you surely understand that all this talk about whether there is a bad and whether... Well, all this talk about, again, is exactly the point to get to. I've said it six months ago to you. I have no help for you. If you don't understand that suffering is bad, then there's nothing we can talk about on the face of this earth that has any real meaning, because you have missed the only thing that has any real meaning. Okay, so... How could I, I couldn't even talk to you about having policy to stop airplane crashes or do anything because none of it could possibly matter. If there's no real harm, real, we meaning something has to be suffering, not some delusion in their head like I need to climb Mount Everest and if I don't climb Mount Everest it would be bad because I say so. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. So again, I, I'm just saying from, from our perspectives are just completely incompatible. We can talk about no subject on this fucking goddamn planet, in my opinion, if you don't understand that what we're trading, what the commerce is, is the welfare, the comfort of sentient organism. That's what's being traded. That's what labor is. That's what everything we, we get involved in is. Why is labor, why do you get paid for labor? It's because it's not fun. Because it's not convenient. It's not comfortable. It's sometimes very unenjoyable. It's burdensome and harassing and fucking irritating and it will consume your health even. That's why you get paid for it. Because it degrades the quality of your experience of life. Idiot. It's bad to me. Every so we are stuck on, on the challenge. Yeah, no, we're stuck on your fucking uh, excessive, reckless irresponsible, sloppy rhetoric where you're claiming somebody is rationally made a mistake, same thing as a logical mistake, made some sort of profound logical mistake if they interpret their sentient experience as having real bad quality. 
that bad isn't a neutral. If they believe their bad sensations are not a neutral sensation, therefore they made a logical error. That's been your accusation, you motherfucking cunt. And again, the only reason why I'm communicating with you is because you're harassing me into it. You're forcing me to by trolling me with your fucking accusations that you've won some fucking argument with a goddamn inanely stupid fucking argument. I've made no logical mistake. I have a right to interpret my feelings and to say I cannot possibly, in all honesty, I'll take a million polygraph tests. There's no fucking honest way I can possibly interpret my sensations, my negative sensations, as neutral or good. No fucking way they can be either one of those fucking things. To punish too by my, your account. Yeah, so. Yeah, so why didn't you just say that right from the beginning? I gave you the fucking premises. If you don't agree with premise two, that there's a real bad, and I did qualify it to point out, I'm talking about negative, like a negative number, like a deficit, like a de degraded circumstance, not some sort of positive, not some sort of little positive or a neutral. I made it quite clear I'm talking about negative in the sense of a negative number. And you still won't, you, you, you pay no attention and just keep making the same argument that there's some sort of logical disconnect. Well, there isn't. The fact that you think the universe can't create something called a negative is your fucking idiotic problem, moron. I'm saying from my personal experience, I goddamn know well it's goddamn can create it. I mean, I have fallen on fences before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know there's such a thing as a bad feeling. It's really futile and adding nothing to the act. Yeah, yeah, it's futile in my opinion to have a conversation with some lunatic who can't acknowledge that the welfare of sentient beings is what's being negotiated here every fucking goddamn day and it's the only thing that has any real value on this fucking cunt planet, you fucking idiot. ...to keep demanding that we deal with uh, these... No, I don't demand that you do a motherfucking thing except quit slandering and claiming you've won some victory when you haven't, you cheating liar. You haven't made a logical argument in defense of your suffering is nothing claim, and that's what it is. Or, if you're not going to say suffering is nothing, then you have to say uh, your suffering is special and everybody else's is nothing. But that's the only way your philosophy can possibly be tied together is one of your premises has to be either all suffering is nothing or your suffering is special and everybody else's is nothing. Each one of those premises are idiotic on their face. Insanely idiotic. We are dealing with uh, we're, we're, we're. How are any one of you motherfucking lying cunts doing that? You just keep, you just keep making emphatic, dogmatic statements. Hume says there's, no, you can't make an is out of an ought. You can't say something is bad, and once it's bad, you can't say you ought to treat it like it's bad and not treat it like a neutral. Somehow, bad doesn't mean bad. Bad just means it's a neutral with a three-letter word instead. Yeah, so we just call neutrals bad just for the fun of it just to pretend they don't exist because it logically doesn't make any goddamn fucking sense if it's a real bad then there's an ought if there's no real bad then there's no real ought that's true but how are you demonstrating the bad doesn't exist how are you doing that with what piece of fucking logic what piece of story are you telling me how I realized because I went to the special tunnel of love and I found out that my pain is really pleasure and all you have to do is, you know, you hit, like, there's, there's, you know, if you press your finger really hard into the side of your temple, the pain turns into an orgasm. It's a trick. See, the, the brain is just fooling you. It's not really a negative sensation. If you just put, press your brain right there, everything will be fine. You don't have any fucking theory of how pain isn't bad. You have no, uh, no way to explain to me how we've all made a mistake and all of you've got it right by saying, Pain doesn't mean anything, especially their pain. It's true uh, for all those who didn't know, and we're saying a bad doesn't mean a bad like you think it means a bad. Right. So again, uh, is that consistent with your personal experience? And I could say that directly to you. Your personal experience of sensation is that pain is just like a neutral, or maybe a little good. But it doesn't have anything to do with any kind of negative thing at all. No, 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 no. It's much better than... It's neutral or better, for sure. For sure. Uh, 
I mean, I, you know, you'd rather feel pain than nothing, for sure. So when you go to the dentist, you make sure you don't, they never gives you any of that Novocaine shit, I'm sure, right? You say, fuck that Novocaine shit. What do you, what do you mean? You think pain is bad, you silly dentist? What are you, fucktarded? Pain's a little good. Okay, yeah, pain isn't really good, but pain's a little bit good. So sure, I want some. I don't want you to neutralize my pain. I don't want you to change my pain into a neutral. That would suck. Because pain's not a neutral. Pain's cool. Pain's fun. Fuck you, lying cunt. And furthermore, I'm saying that any philosophy that relies on a, a definition to um, which which directly entails its um, yeah, it directly entails interpreting a sensation as not a neutral or a good. To identify a sensation as something other than neutral or good, you've committed some error in this ass wipes opinion. You are not allowed to think the universe could possibly create something called a real bad. It, it, it's what, what we think is, that oh, for the longest while, we've been thinking it's a conclusion. Yes, we keep thinking for the longest while it is a conclusion, but it's also a conclusion only that can only possibly be realized through experience. I mean, I really had to have sensations to know they sucked. You really did have to give me a taste of it to know, oh, shit, yeah, I don't want to go anywhere near that crap. You know, I never had my testicles removed without anesthesia, but because I have pinched them a little too hard here or there, or done something, I know that I wouldn't enjoy it. So it's already knowledge gained that it would be bad if it was to happen. But um, in fact, no, it's, it, it, it stitches up the whole position as, as a supposed fact. And, and, uh, uh, yeah, it's a supposed fact. That's right. And I'm just simply saying you either agree with it or you don't agree with it. So you're saying you don't agree that sensations are intrinsically and fundamentally suffering negative sensations are intrinsically bad. They are not a negative thing. There's something between neutral and positive. They're not negative. Um, definition, they're not. Well, again, this, this, this idiotic argument is not a definition. It's just saying that, look, you're saying the definition of the word bad was never really a bad, that it was always some kind of less good condition. So when somebody's kids got swept away in the tsunami right out of their fucking hands, it wasn't that something bad happened. It was just something less good. I mean, the day could have gone better, but there was no real tragedy, no real harm done. Because it's only feelings and sensations. The kids only went gulp, gulp, suffocate, suffocate, uh, blah, 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 suck, you know, die, crush, smash. And you're only left feeling hopeless and helpless. That's not so bad. Hopelessness and helplessness and feeling totally like, what the fuck? I'm never even going to be able to walk the earth again without my kids' faces in my fucking face. <laughs> Just talking to me, saying I'm dead. Fuck you. This is an insane conversation. And nobody is going to accept. Uh, an Nobody's going to accept. So this is another one of his dogmatic pronouncements. So he predicts nobody's going to accept. Now we're on a world where 90% of the human race believes in heaven and hell. All right, that's the world we live in. And they described hell with all the bad shit and they put all the good shit in heaven. So this is the reality we live in. And nobody's going to believe. He's the one saying there is no hell, okay? There's, you know, only a lesser heaven. Ethical uh, philosophy based upon what, what is an arbitrary definition. Right, so he's saying it's arbitrary. There's no connection between negative sensation and positive sensation in the sense that we can't tell the difference between them. They're, they're, it's arbitrary to say there's this complete opposite quality to a good sensation versus a negative sensation. They're just po bad sensation. Even. Uh, that somehow it's arbitrary. We just, we just closed our eyes and went eeny, meeny, miny, mo. We couldn't figure out which one's good and which one's bad. We couldn't figure out which one's a grade up or a grade down. No, no, no. It's just arbitrary. No, it's not arbitrary, you idiot. And it's certainly not arbitrary connected to the word neutral either. Bad is certainly not nothing. It's not 
nothing. I can tell the difference between feeling nothing, Novocaine, and feeling something, intense pain. That's the fact that I can define it, that bad only means um, it's a relative sense of communication. Right. A rel what he means by a relative sense of communication is that bad is somewhere between nothing, neutral, Novocaine, and chocolate ice cream cone. It's some small good, but it's not a bad. And that you think, you know, you have to admit it would be an easy mistake for a person to make because every other sense of the word bad, except when it applies to sentient suffering, um, you know, is this too bad, right? Yeah. Too bad? No, I, I don't think it is. <laughs> so I don't even agree with whatever you're saying there. Too bad. Too bad always, you don't say something's too bad unless something's getting harmed somewhere. Something's paying a bad price somewhere for bad to be used. Uh, and you, you've said recently that it's this, this one special case that uh, bad means really bad. No, I've never said that. So another, another fucking misparaphrase. You just can't ever correctly paraphrase. I said there's one tiny sliver of reality where sentience exists. It's a small percentage of reality, material reality, that's made up of brain. Most of the universe is not brain having sensation. So yeah, yeah, there's a tiny part of reality, of the material reality involved in the creation of a value sensation. That's what I said. I never said anything about just bad, but yes, it is, generally speaking, just bad. Uh, what, whatever that means. It means well, well, it means, uh, the implications are, is that yes, if you want to talk about um, apples and oranges and kumquats and all this other crap, that's fine. But don't pretend you're having a conversation about feelings. Because none of those things are doing the feeling thing. You have to actually look at the thing that's doing feelings when you're going to talk about there's no this, this is odd gap. This is odd gap doesn't exist when you start talking about a sentient experience. There is no is odd gap. As, as you yourself said, you want this, this supposed descriptive um, statement to be both descriptive and prescriptive. Well, I'm saying that as soon as you establish that something is not good and not nothing or neutral, then yeah, the, it, it, it's tied to a prescription in the sense that then it's a real negative. If something is a real negative, you have to do something about it. And we clearly demonstrate that by saying, yes, give me the Novocaine. Because we know the sentient brain will be tormented without it. And the brain over there is doing exactly the same thing. So I have exactly the same cause to say, give it the Novocaine. Because exactly the same thing is going to happen if you don't. The bad will happen. Fuck. You said that. You said that. That's not what I said. So again, you just keep saying shit that I didn't say. But okay, fine. I, I have said that it's not my... <clears throat> There, there's no, you're saying I'm saying both in the same sentence, and I'm not. I'm just saying if real bad exists, if there is the real thing, if it's different than a nothing, you have to treat it different than a nothing. If you treat it exactly the same as nothing, then you've made it nothing. A negative number can't be a negative number if when you add it to a positive number, you don't get zero. It has to be made a negative. The negative has to mean something. If you make the negative mean the same as neutral, then you haven't identified it correctly. You haven't acknowledged one of its properties, which is it's not nothing, it's something, and you have to react to it appropriate to its somethingness, which is negative. Shit. And like I said, you as an individual do that. So that's the hypocrisy of your nonsense. You just won't admit that you only have two choices here. You either think your sensations are import more important than other people, or you're conceding that you're a completely irrational lunatic who keeps pretending his suffering matters. When it doesn't. That you can't help yourself. You somehow logically know your suffering doesn't matter, but you keep telling the dentist to give you Novocaine. Why do you keep wasting Novocaine? The idea of that is both prescriptive and descriptive. 
Yes, that's the. I, I'm just saying that that's the idea. Destruction. Um, lots of negative style kind of words have an implication. Destruction is creating brokenness. Is creating. You know, you could use the. You could go with the analogist uh, 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 concept and understand that it's the anti of anything that could be good or neutral. And that if you treat the anti of good and neutral as the same thing as neutral, then you're not acknowledging its reality. It occurred to me this morning as well. My drug life is very dry. I know this. Yeah, well, whatever. I think we're done. I don't think anything could possibly occur to you that could possibly mean anything to me because your brain can't do the simplest addition. You think your feelings are real and other people's aren't. Silly concept. You think your feelings don't matter, yet you can't stop yourself from pretending they matter or acting as if they matter. So I'm just saying, either way, you're crazy, illogical, and are making a profound error in thinking. So defend one of those circumstances. Defend how your sentience is more real or defend why you can't seem to help yourself but keep wasting resources placating what you claim to be a non-bad event that you keep trying to prevent. Why do you keep trying to prevent yourself from suffering if suffering is either a neutral or a good? Why? Or why are you better than everybody else? The end, fuck you and your tribe. <laughs>